It's time for the David Ford Show here on A's Cast. Your general manager of the Oakland Athletics. We're just talking about today is the battle of two Korean Series champions. That's right. When you look at Merrill Kelly and Drew Rusinski, uh, SK Weavern. Sure, go with that. If I were that smart, I would have brought my sunglasses <laughs> out here. So don't assume that I know anything. You know how many times I've done that where I got all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, the next couple hours, I have no shade. And the sun literally is right above us. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Uh, good. Let's just get through some medicals quickly. Uh, we heard Seth Brown's coming back. He's trying. Yeah, he played uh, played for Vegas the other night. He's going to head to Stockton this week, hopefully play three or four games for Stockton this week and meet us in Seattle. That's the hope. I got to think for him, like he's just itching, like has to get, like one of those guys who's yeah. calling you, texting well, he, you. You know, when he got back here from Baltimore that day, he told me it was only going to be two weeks which we know for an oblique injury, it's never two weeks. So, yeah, he's been ready to come back for a while, but you got to be careful. How often do you have to save athletes from themselves? <laughs> I don't. The Brian Schulman and the medical staff do. So, <laughs> um, no, I mean, that's what you want, obviously. You want guys to be working hard, itching to get back out there, as opposed to the alternative where you're, you know, you have to push them out on the field, which which does happen also. Um, but no, you like when guys are ready to come back early. How about Mason Miller going to get a second opinion? Just, yeah, it's pretty standard these days. Guys want to make sure they get it looked at. And uh, we still think it's minor just in the in the muscle and uh, hope to have him play and catch, you know, in the next couple of days. You know, that's become the thing that we've looked around with baseball. It's like, it's it's so scary how many times we wake up and we get these notifications. This guy's having Tommy John. This guy has this. This guy has that. You can push guys back. You can hold them down pitches. I mean, keeping guys healthy has just been so, so hard to pinpoint how to do it. When yeah. we're asking guys, this is what I think. Some people have kind of backed it up. I want your opinion. We're asking pitchers to be maxed all the time. It just seems like when they are out there, it's full go and their bodies just can't take it. I, I don't know what the answer yeah. is. No, there's there's a lot of theories out there. In fact, Baseball Prospectus wrote an article today about whether or not the pitch clock has had an impact because, I mean, it's a fact. Elbow and shoulder injuries are up like 70% over where they have been the last couple of years this time of the season. So there are a lot more injuries. Um, and, you know, every case is different. Mason, Mason has an injury history. I mean, he's had a screw in his elbow since – I think he was 13 years old. So, um, you know, he's had injuries the whole time he's been in the system. We always say the best predictor of future injury is past injury. So we know that guys come with risk, um, but injuries to pitchers specifically are up across the game. And, um, you know, we've seen it in recent years with what you said, guys are throwing max effort, throwing harder than they ever have, throwing the ball with more movement than they ever have. And unfortunately, those come with con those things come with consequences. Yeah, how do you tell somebody not to be at their very, 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 very best? We see in golf all the time now, the way you got the way everybody everything's built off technology and data, and guys throw their backs out, and then you know who knows yeah. the rest of your career. So it's tough to tell guys not to be at one. We want them to play one hundred and ten percent, but uh, yeah. hundred and you know doing max out one hundred. percent 100 percent is tough to keep healthy yeah and the reality is like staying on the field is a skill it's yes. a real skill that we talk about you know all the way from amateur conversations up until trade conversations whatever like if you have a guy with with a good quote good injury history which means basically no injuries like that's an important part of the evaluation now you gotta think in your tenure as gm you didn't graduate with a medical degree from Harvard, right? <laughs> I didn't. It's funny you say that, though, because there's a story that a lot of people in the organization know. When we were interviewing trainers uh, before we hired Nick, so at the end of 2011, we brought in a candidate. And after like an hour of the conversation, he said, well, you know, David, you're a doctor. And I was like, whoa, like what? <laughs> What part of this interview made you think that I have an MD? So Dan, Dan and Rob and some yeah. of the guys in the office like to joke about that. But no, I am not a doctor. But you just think <laughs> about it, though. You had to answer all the questions about COVID. Like all of a sudden you're a virus expert and you're supposed to be the guy that knows how to protect an entire organization. You had to go through that. Yeah. And now you're in an era where pitchers are getting hurt more than everybody. People might like me are asking you. I mean, you've been asked a ton about medical issues uh -huh. without having a medical degree. I, we've had really good people. I mean, going all the way back to Larry Davis and Steve Sales, who were head athletic trainer. And then obviously Nick Paparesta being here as long as he has. And now with Brian and Jeff, I've had really good people who've educated me and, 
look, I end up reading MRI reports a lot. Like, I don't know what that's worth, but yeah. I, I had a handful of surgeries myself. So over 40 something years, you kind of learn some of this stuff. All right. So I think we, any, any other medical I need to ask you about <laughs> that I, uh, no, I think we're getting healthy. Let miss back yesterday. Adrian back today, Paul Blackburn through 40, oh, there's it. Paulie threw 40 pitches yesterday. He's got a couple more starts. We got to, you know, We've just had bad luck with him. I mean, he he's going to end up missing two months because of a, a broken fingernail and a blister. That's it's impossible. Really bad luck. Yeah, it's really bad luck. So we we'd like to get him a couple more starts to get him stretched out. But obviously, we need Paul back here. So hopefully, we're getting closer to that. Um, you know, Manny had a setback when he went out for his rehab, so he's going to be a little while. Hoping guys like Freddie Tarnock and Kirby Sneed can get out there pitching here in the next few weeks. So. Be nice to get those uh, IL numbers down. You know, the, you know, one thing that I've been really hammering, especially in the post game show, is young cores get beat up. Yeah. But then they learn by getting beat up, <laughs> and then they start winning. Right. Yeah. I mean that that's what you hope. I mean, yes, this is this is a young core, and and Cots I know has all the numbers about seven rookies in the lineup and four or five rookies in the rotation. Like we're really young, and and. You know, we're learning that when you don't have some veterans around to protect those guys, this is where you end up. You end up getting beat up more more than you want. And it's unfortunate, and it's most nights it's not a lot of fun. But if you can sort of point to some of those things, learn from them, then you get something out of it. And, and you know, then you have a big positive night like we did on Friday night, and you take a win away, and guys have a good time, and Fuji gets his first win, and Rooker hits a walk-off, and you're like, okay. Like there, there, there are some positives here, and you take those things away. Well, I'm all in. I when I see Ruiz in the lineup, I've talked to you about how much I love Noda. Yeah. Rooker obviously is playing like an all star. I'm loving me some JJ Blade, Langoliers. I'm seeing even though Rooker is not young at 28, he's like he's young. Yeah, he's young but, in terms of his experience. But and, this group, this five, they throw Diaz in there. This like six. This is a truly. A young core. Yeah. No, and I look, I know you're all in. I watched you on TV Friday night after the game. You and Stu standing out there because I was home because I couldn't watch. I left after the ninth inning. I couldn't watch anymore. So I got home in time to see the homer, and then I watched you guys in the postgame show, and I appreciate your enthusiasm. And, yeah. And, yeah, I, I, I think you're right. I mean, again, it's hard when you have our record and you only have nine wins um, to, to really – you know, be enthusiastic, but we do take positives. And all those guys you mentioned, they're learning on the fly. And and you have to sort of stretch it out and look at down the road and what, what Ruiz is going to take away from what he learns every day. And JJ's now getting a chance to play every day. And, you know, and, and the pitchers too, you know, JP, you know, JP gave up two runs in the first two batters yesterday, and then he shut it down for the next five. Like those are positive things that you look at. While the Chuck came out of his start the other day and said in the first inning, he finally felt like, what he was doing at the end of last season, whatever the reason is he hasn't had the same stuff. He threw a lot in the off season, went on the first inning, felt really good. And then obviously gave up some runs along the way, the rest of the game. But those little positive things you take and you extrapolate them. And you know that like, Hey, if we can just be consistent, if we can do those things consistently, that's when we get back to winning. And that's really the difference between, you know, the guys who are really good and the guys who struggle is consistency because they can all do it once, you know, one at bat, one pitch, one inning. Like that's the difference between big leaguers and minor leaguers too is, is how frequently can you repeat it and do it and do it and do it. And that's what our guys are hopefully learning to do. I know some people are like, well, why are you positive? Are you just being a homer? It's like, no, I, I, I and I say this. I'm like, I'm not going to grind the wins and losses because I know what this year is about. There's yeah. not, we can't control that. We know what the situation you were in. You can only control what you can control, but I can look at a game like yesterday and see Lang Aliers and know that he's hitting 271, nine RBIs the last 13 games. Right. I'm watching guys get better. I'm watching, I'm watching Noda do mature things. And I hear, I've had a couple people say to me, well, I, I want him to swing it more. I'm like, I get it. But what he's doing is such a mature approach. The, the swing and more will happen. The last thing I want is for Noda to swing it more. I'm I, like, it's a mature approach that could get him in the All Star game. I mean, there, I'm a, I'm going to look at the things that are going to help this ball club get back into the yeah. postseason no, versus I, grind on some losses. I really appreciate it. Like I said, I watch you on TV, and I I you know I get that the fans you know sort of give it to you a little bit that way, but yeah. because look. I'm not going to discount. They come out here. They want to see the team win. They're, they're out here. They're supporting the team. They're spending money to come. 
They want wins. They don't necessarily want to take like moral victories away from their experience at the ballpark. Yeah, I, get I, it. I totally yeah. get it. And, and yeah, I mean, again, we've talked about this a million times, like everyone else who comes out here and works and is in the dugout, we want to win too. Um, but the alternative is just, you know, being miserable all the time. So you got to take some positives away. How do you get better on defense? Uh, we have to. Yeah, we. it's something that Cots and Aldo and Emar, like these guys are all grinding on it day to day. And, you know, obviously you saw Ruiz had a tough day out there yesterday and no one takes it harder than him. Um, you know, he, he met with Cots after the game to talk about it. And some of that is a communication thing. Some of that is, um, you know, guys not playing in their best spots right now. But we, we do need to catch the ball better because it, it's all connected. The pitching, the pitching's connected to the defense. And we get if we don't play defense, we get down. And the offense is always playing from behind. So you're right. It's it's something we got to get better at. Now Ruiz with the Padres. I don't know what he did with the Brewers, but with the Padres, he played some middle infield. Have you ever he, thought about that? So he has not really played the infield since since before the pandemic basically 19 okay. was his last year playing regularly in the infield oh you know over the course of that year 20 he didn't play but he converted to an outfield and he's been pretty much an outfielder since the beginning of 2021 um he look he was converted to the outfield for a reason he wasn't he wasn't a great second baseman or third baseman when they had him in the infield so. he was a gold glove caliber is what you're saying <laughs> no he was not um so no we have not thought about playing him in the infield but he has played all over um, obviously JJ's played in center field too. When Brownie comes back, Brownie will have played some center field. Um, but right now I think, you know, the idea is to give SD the chance out there to, to get, to get better and, um, you know, to learn the position. He, he has only been out there for a couple of years. I love JJ Bladé. Yeah. I mean, you watch him play and you go, I see why he was the fourth pick in the draft and why some people thought he could have been the first pick in the draft. He could have gone any of the top five spots, right? Yeah. I mean, he was that, I mean, you just, you see size, you see speed, you see power. He's, he, he, as he says, he's cutting, chopping down more on the ball. But he's hitting line drives, yeah. hit ground balls. He can run. We. That's the first time, first at bat I ever saw him take. Maybe this is part of it. Was the in feet, Was the uh, inside the park home run at spring training? It was that right for Boos's uh, re that's retirement right. party. The next day I'm there and he hits it off the backdrop, and I'm like, did he just score? I mean, it's like he's got all the tools. Yeah. So, you know, it's been fun, and, and you love when a guy takes advantage of the opportunity. Came up, got some hits right away. I mean, we knew he was swinging a hot bat in AAA when he came up. Um, but, you know, the best thing right now about J.J. are the adjustments he's made from last year. I mean, we saw him here in September with the Marlins, uh, and you saw him get beat by that high fastball. And that's what happened in the big leagues last year was, you know, he, he learned in the Marlins system a lot about launch angle and getting under the ball. And, frankly, when he got up here to the big leagues – 95 at the top of the zone went right by him and he he knew that he made the adjustment in the offseason and we've seen him like you said swinging down on the ball sort of that old school you know chopping wood yeah stuff that we learned growing up a little bit and it's been successful for him and he's getting his hits how often do you see players in the big leagues now and even young players where if you're looking at a baseball and guys are hitting the bottom of the baseball we know what's going but we know what they're trying to do how yeah. often do you look at it and you go Man, if they just tweaked it, because they're just trying, they're 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 into the launch angle thing, and they're hitting yeah. the bottom of the baseball, and it's just going straight up. I I'm not a hitting coach, so it's not the. First but you were a thing. great hitter. Whoa, it's <laughs> I was an okay college pickleball hitter. champion, from what my scouting reports say. <laughs> I didn't get hurt today playing pickleball. That was the biggest win. Um, no, look, I'm not a hitting coach. I mean, we obviously see a lot. We watch the minor leaguers. We watch a lot of film. Um, but, you know, I leave that to, to Tommy and Crony in the cage. But you definitely see out there, there are guys who've gotten sort of sucked into this launch angle thing and they're swinging up on the ball with the hopes of hitting homers. And it's it's not always working. There are only a handful of guys. You got to have the hand eye to get away with it. Not everybody can do it. Who's down at Vegas right now making it tough on you to keep them there? Right now, Cody Thomas is swinging the best bat. He's got eight, eight or too. nine homers. He got off to a really good start. Um, you know, there's some other guys who have not been as consistent. Tyler had a really good day yesterday. He's, you know, he's hitting homers. He hasn't, hasn't hit for average or taken walks just yet. He hasn't been as selective as we'd like him to be. Um, but there are some guys, again, we talked earlier about consistency. The guys who are going to be consistent in AAA are the guys that are going to force their, their way here. Um, look, frankly, a lot of, a lot of the guys who were hot there are already here. I mean, JJ's here. Rico Garcia was here. Acton's here now. Like, 
guys who are performing there, there's nothing but opportunity to get here right now. Yeah, I've talked about Cody from a standpoint of saying, listen, you don't go to Oklahoma and play quarterback unless you're an elite athlete. You got to have size. You got to have an arm. You got to have you got to have speed. Yeah, Oklahoma's recruiting the best of the best around the country. Now it's just getting him truly to be a baseball player. Yeah. But he has that, I mean, as we say, that kind of athletic ability you can't teach. And he, he missed so much time when he came over from the Dodgers in that trade and got hurt, missed so much of the season and, and rehabbing. And, you know, last year made it up to the big leagues because he had a nice little, you know, 30 at bat stint. Um, but now it's finally getting a full season, getting consistent. And the power is huge. It's always there. And, and, I think he's the guy who's, you know, sort of opened the most eyes in AAA right now. It's something that really is a question I know we all get. And I just want to throw it to you. You know, there's there's a lot of outside noise. As I always say, it's stuff outside of the lines. How do you keep everybody in your department laser focused? We control what we can control. Yeah, I, I don't think our, our folks have a hard time with that. I mean, look, this is, you know, the way this season has gone, like every day is a little bit of a fire drill right now. And we're, we're trying to prepare, you know, the staff as best we can and get information down, make moves to make this team better, focus on the minor leagues. There's, there's a, enough going on that, you know, the quote outside stuff doesn't really affect our guys. And the scouts are out there working on the draft, which is good. Minor leagues happen every day. So I, I don't worry too much about that stuff. I do not like, I, I, I get the whole all-star game, make the draft bigger. We want our prospects to have more of a name what we see in the NFL and the NBA where these guys come out of college and we already know, but it is just, you lose time with them the year they get, I mean, you know all this. I mean, you, you lose the time. I mean, you could draft them, get them playing. It's just, it's weird. The draft, we're not even close. <laughs> no. It's mid-May. We're not even close. We're almost two months away. Uh, again, another thing that we don't have control over. So Control the controllables, we'll Jim Arba. We'll just hang with it. I mean, our, our guys will be at the Combine next month in Arizona and, get to meet some of these kids, see them work out. And, you know, we're getting used to it by now that this there's a later draft date, but we'll deal with it. Let's end on this. Is there one player, give us the one player where you say, dang, I didn't know he could do that. Or I, that's a lot better than I thought. Who's the one guy right now out here that has just surprised you that went, Hey, by playing every day, he's doing what I didn't think he could do. I mean, we, we obviously didn't see a lot of SD before he was here. Um, you know, we knew what he was capable of with his legs, running the bases, his hitting and running with runners in scoring position yesterday being a, an exception has been great. Um, but Noda's, you know, Noda's plate discipline, his strike zone, I, I don't say this lightly, is as good as anyone we've had here since Jason. I mean, just his understanding, That's Giambi, folks. his understanding of this box and yeah. not going out of it. Now, yeah, he needs to, you know, get some hits and get his average up. But if you're going to be on base 40 percent of the time, there's a spot for you in this league. Uh, and he's doing that with the, with some of the elite guys in the game. Uh, ever since I met him at spring training, I got to talk to him off the air. I love the kid. I love I love his confidence. I mean, when he steps up immediately says, yeah, I can be a gold glover. I went, Hey, why not? <laughs> I mean, you got to believe in yourself. I, I really like him a lot. I, I want to see him against lefties. Yeah. I want to see him against everybody. No, he's, he's got, a, he's got, he's got this ability. He does. As I mean, they said, money ball. What does he do? He, he gets on base. I mean, we've, we have talked from the, the first days I worked here, you know, when Paul was around, you know, the game is played in this box and hitters try to get you to come in and pitchers try to get you to go out. And that's the essence of the game. And and Noda stays in that box as well as anybody. So he's going to have some success. Doctor, we appreciate you stopping by. <laughs> the doctor of your Oakland Athletics, David Forrest. Great stuff. We'll talk to you soon. All right, Tony.